Hi everybody, welcome back. Jason with Happy Tales RVing here. I got Beth on the other side as always. Hi everybody. She has the beauty on this side and the gorgeous on that side. So, uh, A couple weeks ago we talked about um, our top products that we had for 23 and I alluded to a new product that we bought that was just off the charts and we felt that it needed to be dedicated to its own video. And that is this guy right here. I'll kind of bring it in to you. And that is an Orion DC to DC charger. And you say, well, what is that? What exactly does that do? Well, on your seven plug wire that comes from your camper to your pickup, it does have a line dedicated for 12 volt input. And basically your pickup would try to charge your batteries. Now that will work and that does do its job. Well, I just shouldn't even say do its job. It does what it's intended to supply 12 volts, but it is at such a low current that your batteries will never be charged when you're going stop to stop basically. So that's what this guy does. It takes place of that. Now, unfortunately you do have to wire in quite a bit of stuff to make it work, but once you do, it's fantastic. And we'll kind of go through an app and I'll show you the app base of this, which is, you know, it runs off of Bluetooth and it it's, gives you all the information. You're able to set your settings up, so on and so forth. And it's very user friendly. The reason that we switched to this is I'll have Beth kind of turn just a little bit. See, we have a residential fridge. And as we're going from stop to stop, we would notice that our battery bank would draw down. Not a lot, but it would still come down. We wanted the ability to keep that charged up as we're driving, just in case, like if we're using a harvest host or if we're doing a Walmart or a boondocking overnight, that that would stay charged up. We would never have to worry about losing a fridge, you know, uh, product, food, you name it, because of our batteries running down. Now we do have a, a large battery bank. We are running 600. Uh, milliamp hours of batteries. We are using uh, Battleborn batteries. We've had not a problem with them. This is just an added little thing to kind of help keep them at their top performance as we're going down the road. So without further ado, I will go outside. I'll show you how we did the install. The reason I didn't do an install video with this guy is because I wasn't sure on how it would work if I would be able to make the, you know, the wiring and I'll do all of that stuff myself. And it was a big concern for me. Um, long story short, I really didn't need to worry. It, it went together simple. I will show you a couple little hiccups that we ran into. And just so that when you come up to it, you already know about it. So let's take a trip outside. We'll start on the truck and I'll kind of show you what we did there. So we're out here at the truck, obviously. Sorry for the sunglasses, it's just really bright today. I didn't want to squint in front of you. Um, these are basically the tools that I used. Uh, first, just a multimeter. This is a fishing wire. This was the gauge of wire that we used. Um, we got 50 feet of negative and 50 feet of positive. I ran out of all the positive, um, but I had enough. That guy was 25 bucks for both of them. So, well, again, this stuff will be here for links down in the description. Um, actual wire cutters. These are actually for cable cutters. Um, flush cut side dikes. Your seven in one, 11 in one screwdriver. Zip ties. And then most importantly, this was our battery crimper. Um, this I used to make not only terminal crimps in with the bigger four rot gauge, but some of the crimps that we did here for um, crimping into the Anderson plug, as well as crimping on eyelets for the negatives. Uh, it's a hydraulic crimper. It goes from 16 AWG all the way up to four aught. So fantastic. That guy's only like 65 bucks. Again, we'll put it down in the links. So all in all, even with the, if you were to buy all this stuff right off the bat, just to do this project, you would be under 500 bucks and that's including the Orion. So let's go over here to the Anderson plug. Uh, and that's this guy here. So what I did is this is a factory plug. Obviously I drilled two holes right here that were a 29 64 drill bit. 
and that was to catch the gauge of that wire just right to go through here now we did buy caps these nice rubber caps i bought those those are 10 bucks the anderson plug was about 20 bucks again all this stuff will be linked down in the the description we did have this rigid mount and we found that we were struggling really hard to plug in and unplug that cable from the trailer so what we did is i just pulled the screw out and kind of left it this works for us so your application might be a little bit different but like i said for us this works now i will go down i'll kind of show you how i wired it from there down to the the truck and how we got it all the way to the front okay so we are under the truck this is the factory sorry this, this is the factory loom right here that comes down from the trailer plug and then we kind of follow the wires back zip tied to it then i took the ground here it's grounded to the frame and then i took my my positive lead and i just followed the factory wire loom and what goes all the way up towards the front of the truck uh did it was kind of a pain in the derriere getting around the fuel tank but as you kind of flush through there you'll see that it, it works it's just take your time okay so then we just kind of followed along this loom that loom goes around the body mounts of the cab it's really simple to follow once we got over the fuel tank it was a piece of cake and i'll kind of grab this from beth real quick we then came up here come to this uh circuit breaker and then we kind of come back up here now this was something that i did run into You'll notice here on the negative post that there is an actual auxiliary post here for a, for a secondary ground. I was hoping that the positive would have that. And as you can see, the positive does not have a post. So what I had to do is I had to buy an auxiliary post here that allowed me to put that over the battery like so. And then I could mount a auxiliary top post to it as well as you can see, I have secondary post on the inside. So that I was able to run this wire in. Now, we used four AWG wire instead of six gauge. It recommends six gauge, and if I was to redo it, I would definitely do six gauge. I went with four gauge just to hopefully offset the heat and any type of resistance that we would have coming through here. It's way overkill. Um, definitely, if I was to do this again, I would do six gauge wire. Um, we have an 80 amp circuit breaker here to kind of it's auto reset and it has a little yellow tab that flips out when you when it trips or if you want to disconnect it you just hit the red button to reset it you just hit the yellow that was a little weird i didn't want to mount it onto the battery um, tolerances with the hood is really difficult in here uh, we had one here it struck the hood so that's why we kind of mounted it down on the side here it's out of the way of everything um, i thought that we would have to disconnect that a lot before i realized how that app works so right now i'm going to kind of go into the app before we go back to the trailer and show you how that app works all right so we are going to go into our victron and we are going to automatically connect to our orion we go back here we can just select through here the Orion you'll see that it connects and you can see the voltage going in and the voltage coming out uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now uh, right now we are at bulk charging this is just trying to figure out what our batteries are set at we can go into a graft and then you can see bulk absorption and float status like I said, we're at bulk here in just a few minutes. It'll drop down to absorption. Um, we go to our battery settings. This is where you can change your settings. I don't recommend this unless you know exactly what you want to have. You can change define presets, edit presets, and this is kind of how you go through everything. As you can see, I'm cycling through the different style of batteries. So we're going to go back to our lithium, which is that. So we don't want to change anything. Now, one cool thing that this guy does 
have is, we'll go back here, engine shutdown. So this will not continue to draw on your batteries of your, your vehicle if you have a smart alternator. Um, and you, again, you can change this, you can shut this off and then it will continue to pull. But as you see, this guy start voltage of 14, delayed start, and then how long it waits to start pulling voltage is 120 seconds. And then it'll shut off the voltage when it detects that it's below 1310. So if you shut your vehicle off and you're sitting somewhere, it will not continually to drain your batteries. Awesome feature that they have. And that's kind of here again. And then this is our lockout. Again, our input voltage lockout is 12 volts and then it'll sound an alarm at 12.5 when it drops that low and it'll turn off at 12.7. So this is how we have our plug set up for the trailer. You'll see the original seven way plug here and then our Anderson plug here. Basically, this guy just comes out and then you have your positive and negative and you have your negative and your positive on this end. It can really only go one way. And then it plugs in, and then we plug this guy in like so. Now mind you, the trailer's normally over here. We're just using this to show you. So, and this will ride like this. So when we unplug it, we just put our rubber caps back on here just to keep the moisture out. You'll notice that we actually put a sleeve over our cables. We just did that just to clean it up kind of makes it nice so we don't have three cables all flopping around together. I'll have this guy as well down in the link. When we started this, we tried to go with the original. We tried to follow this four gauge wire all the way up with the original wires up through here, up and then around, up underneath this guy. Um, we used the fishing wire. We tried for probably an hour. I kept hitting one of the cross members that are back here. Um, it's basically like right here on that curve. I just could not get around it. I know that there's holes in there, but I couldn't find it with the fishing wire. So my next best option was to, we pulled this guy down and we slid it up in between the fiberglass and the steel frame, just on this piece right here. Everything else is up in there. Um, and then I will grab the camera from Beth and I'll show you where I came out. All right, so we're inside here. As you can see, here's the door. We just drilled, uh, I believe it was a three quarter inch hole with a hole saw and then brought our two wires out. We kind of fed them along so, and then the negative goes down here. Let me get around these baskets. Down into the corner, into our bus bar of our negative. And then the positive follows around and goes down into the Orion. Now, here's a buyer beware. We ran into this. We had, let me tilt this guy down just a little bit. We had the negative wired. We had the positive from the truck. We had the positive going into the battery bank down. Well, this guy comes up here to our Lynx distribution. Um, we had everything except for this little ground wire wired in and <laughs> I couldn't get this thing to read at all. I couldn't find it on the app. I couldn't get any of these lights to light up. It was really bothering me and I didn't understand why. Turns out that you have to have this ground on too. I was going to put it on. I just hadn't had it on there. And then you have to supply power, which is really weird because you have to supply the power to this and have a complete circuit to the batteries. I was wanting to not have to do that. I was wanting to be able to just run from the truck into this, program it, and then plug the batteries into it. Turns out it didn't really matter much. Uh, we didn't change the programming. Now, there is a lot of talk about these things getting hot and I will kind of spin up here on top and you can see that there's fins. And yes, they get extremely hot, especially if your battery bank, which is under here, is uh, very low because it is trying to convert that, that energy. 
So these fins get hot. What my solution was, I was gonna mount a fan right here and blow air down. I haven't had to do that because ours just really don't get that hot because our batteries are full when we start heading out. And this is just basically a maintainer. Um, it's just keeping those batteries full. We don't have a lot of draw when we're, we're driving. We're not driving with the AC on. All we're really concerned about is our fridge. So, but I did use some half inch aluminum tubing to bring that out to let more air slide in behind that. And it seems to be working just fine. So that's kind of what we did. Again, here's our battery bank. We have, you know, like I said, 600 amp hour batteries. They work for us, but this Orion is fantastic. We uh, did a eight hour drive the other day. And when we got stopped, our batteries were at hundred percent. So it was fantastic. Nothing in here was hot. So it works for us. And like I said, this is one product that we bought this year. Well, excuse me, last year, 2023. It was phenomenal and we wish we would have purchased this thing many many years ago when we first started uh that technology has just every time something comes out and these have been out for a long time i'm, I'm not trying to imply that you know they just came out but the technology is there and it's fantastic that guy was about 280 bucks uh, like I said, the whole project is under 500 bucks and it is well worth it. So if you guys are interested, I highly recommend it. It's not that hard to do. It probably took Beth and I maybe about two hours and most of it was on the camper end trying to get that wire in. It was really a pain in the butt, but you know, we came up with a solution that worked for us and it's been fantastic ever since. So again, thank you for tuning in. If you guys got any questions, hit us up in the comment section. All of the parts, the tools, the material will all be linked down into the description. So please go check those out. And again, if you guys like what you see, hit that like button, hit that su subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye, and thank you again. See ya.